most powerful brick barrel air rifle in the world. Now what I have today is the Hot Sand Mod 130 QE. It has a suppressor on the end. And I'm not saying this is the most powerful air gun in the world, but the most powerful brake barrel. And I believe this has a piston in it that's not a spring. It's a uh, pneumatic type piston, I think. And it's rated at 550 feet per second. That might not sound very fast, but we're talking 30 caliber pellets. These ones particularly weigh 48.6 grains. I think the 550 feet per second velocity rated is out of 44 44 grain pellets but big old 30 caliber pellets and i thought it might be kind of fun to see how an air rifle can actually compare to a real firearm cartridge so what i have here today is 32 smith and wesson long and what i did with these these are legitimate you know handgun cartridges i loaded them at the starting charge for hand loading data so they are legitimate firearm cartridges, but I think we're gonna get close to velocity with these as the air rifle. And these are 95 grain semi-wad cutters. And by the way, uh, 32 Smith & Wesson Long, that's the cartridge that was used in the 1974 movie Death Wish, the original one. And uh, Paul Kirsty had the, I think it was a four inch police positive, Colt police positive and 32 Smith & Wesson Long. So we're gonna run the gamut of tests on here to see if this uh, 30 caliber air rifle is as powerful as a firearm. So I got some coconuts here. A lot of people like to say that this is a representation of like a human skull. I don't think it's quite the same, but it might be kind of close. So we're gonna go through our chronograph. We're gonna see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. We're gonna go through our ballistics gel block. So I think this is gonna tell us a lot here. You know, I don't know how far exactly it would be to be considered deadly. I know that the FBI uses 12 to 18 inches as ideal for a good cartridge, but my guess is if we're anywhere around six inches, we're probably at a level that could, you know, hit a human vital organ. But the main test I want to do here today is the juggernaut box. And the reason why is because I have not gotten anything other than firearms to go through this pack. You know, we're talking a one and three quarter inch pack of bologna. We lose a lot of power in that pack. And then what we have that makes it so hard is this, this one quarter inch medium density fiberboard to kind of represent like ribs or sternum. You know, I shot this with the pistol crossbow, the 50 pound pistol crossbow, the 22 caliber pellet rifle, the slingshot. I couldn't get anything to go through this. So this is going to be what I'm going to judge whether it's deadly or not. Um, so, yeah, if we can get through this, that probably says something. And I'm also going to fire from 25 yards at my 10 inch steel gong to see the accuracy. So let's get started with this test and see how they these two do compared to each other and see if we can really rival a firearm with a an air gun so let's get started with the test all right first up we have this 32 smith and wesson lung loaded at the starting charge through a really short barrel so this should really bring our power down and that pellet rifle is going to bring our power up compared to most so let's see how what how they compare what kind of velocity we get out of this 32 i loaded 508 551 553, 508, 519. So not particularly consistent, but not too bad. Let's see how that pellet rifle compares. All right, here's our pellet rifle, a very big rifle. I hear it's really hard to cock this thing. So let's see what I can do here. Yeah, it's pretty hard. It's not the hardest thing ever, but it's pretty hard. This is a big old pellet going in here. This is interesting looking. Kind of awkward to feel with the thumb hole stock. Looks like the safety automatically engages. You pull it back to fire. So let's see what we get here. I'm not sure if that was a read from this or from my last round. I, I wasn't paying attention there. Let me, maybe I misread. Um, let's try another one. Yeah, it's not wanting to read. You would think with this 30 caliber, it wouldn't be such a hard thing for it to read because it's a big pellet. Yeah, 
But I had this issue before with all my other pellet rifles. There's something about pellet rifles it doesn't want to pick up. But we're seeing here um, that we're pretty close in our accuracy at point of aim. Yeah, it's not wanting to read. This might take a while to get a reading, so I'll fast forward till I do. All right, I got up really close. I aimed really low down, 553. That's actually the rate of velocity for this gun with a 44 grain, and we're doing a 48 grain. So, yeah, we're about the same velocity as that 32 Smith & Wesson, but, of course, our bullet weight is, I think, a little over half. So, let's try to get one more read here. No read, but I'm going to take that reading because that's a, you know, that's what people are reportedly getting with stuff like this. So I definitely trust that read. Um, let's hit our ballistic gelatin and see how these two compare to each other. All right, first up, we have our 32 Smith & Wesson Long. I'm not going to use denim on this because, quite frankly, we don't need that. Uh, so let's see how far this goes into the block. So that is really impressive and pretty cool here that it went so far. I mean, we're talking 27 and three quarter inches is our wound path here. And we're our base of our bullet, it did tumble. Looks like we're right at about 27 and a quarter here. Um, that's pretty impressive. We don't have a lot of damage going on in this ballistic shell tent, but that is impressive to get that kind of penetration. Let's see how that pellet gun compares in this. And I'm going to say anything that's over six inches is probably good to go for lethality all right next up we have our 30 caliber pellet let's see what this does good shot and what we see here is pretty interesting um, our damage path is at about seven and three quarters but our pellet came back and rested at about six and three quarters almost let me hit one more and see if that's comparable and i'm mainly doing this because that looks really cool in there i just want to see another one in there see a little higher And we have near identical results, except, you know, we are about, you know, maybe a quarter inch deeper on that one. So pretty consistent. Let's hit those coconuts and just see if these can break through it, because that's always been a, a thing you hear. Well, if it can break through a coconut, it can break through a human skull. So it might be true. I, I shot I shot coconuts with a 44 caliber slingshot moving at about 200 feet per second. That didn't break through, just kind of cracked it. So we'll see if these will actually break through. All right, I'm back maybe five to six yards from that coconut. Let's hit it with the 32 Smith & Wesson Long. And what we see here is it didn't do a whole lot of damage, but it did enter right here, and it did come out. So in any standard um, personal defense situation, even that lowly 32 Smith & Wesson Long, we do the job if the right shot placement was made. Let's see how that pellet gun compares. All right, pellet gun. Let's see what this does. All right, so it actually grazed it. Interesting, so that makes me a little bit nervous and cautious at the same time, so I'm gonna back up a little bit before I make another shot. All right, I came back about 10 yards just to get a little distance between me and that coconut. I'll try to make a better shot on it. Shot over the top. I, don't, I, I went down all the way to like six inches below it and it's still hitting the same spot. I'm going to go up a little bit. 
I'm expecting my point of aim and impact to be so far off at that distance. All right, I saw the pellet hit the dirt like it ricocheted. It's exactly what we're seeing. For some reason, it's ricocheting. I don't know if I'm just grazing it or if I'm actually hitting it straight on. But it kind of makes me a little bit nervous. So I'm just going to move right on to the juggernaut box and see if this can go through that baloney pack. All right, 32 Smith and Wesson Long. We'll see what this does to our baloney pack. Good solid hit. As we might expect, that's not going to do a whole lot of damage to this. It's just going to punch a clean hole through it. So let's see what we got in water jugs. And when we're talking solids, this is one of the things that never really compares to ballistics gel. Hollow points normally do for a said, you know, penetration, but solid lead ones don't. Two, <laughs> two, two, impact on three. Looks like it's tumbling. Impact on four. And no real dent out the you know, back of four. So what we're looking at is probably about 17 inches, typically compared to ballistic shell. Obviously we had a lot more in our actual ballistic shell. Um, hollow points are usually spot on, but I've noticed that, you know, just solids are not the same comparison. And what we got is pretty much what you'd expect. No real deformation. Let's see how that pellet gun compares. All right, this is gonna be my standard. If this goes through. We might be what I would consider lethal, but I definitely have my doubts about this after seeing that coconut. So we'll try anyways. If we break water, I might change my mind here. So see what happens. I don't see any water. We did not break through, but this provided the most damage I've actually seen thus far in any of my pellet gun testing. Because not only did it impact that fiber board, but it almost, you know, blew a hole out the back. So that's pretty close. That is really close to what I might consider deadly. I'm going to hit it one more time. There's actually quite a dent in the front of this jug where that wood hit. It kind of cracked the label on that paper. Get a little bit closer to get a little more energy. Oh, we're leaking. We are definitely leaking water. Um, but what it looks like happened is I hit a little bit different spot, but being already weakened a little bit, that allowed it to go through. And obviously we're in our first jug here. There's actually a dent out the back though. That's impressive. And this totally mushroomed to a much larger size when hitting that. So I'm not sure what I think here. I would hit a wood pack of two by fours and just see how these two compare now. All right, I decided to come back about 10 yards just for a little bit of safety sake. And I'm gonna hit our 32 into that wood pack if I can hit it from here. All right, a little bit high, but I hit it. All right, 30 caliber pellet. Try to hit that wherever I can. Pulled it to the right. I think these sights might be off. Because I just, you know, I pulled it up out of the box. So let me take a look at this real quick. And I drifted them a little bit to the right. Let's see what we get here. Oh, I hit it. I barely grazed it. So I'm going to drift it a little bit further to the right. Interesting. I'll try to hit it more centered now. Yeah, these sights are way off. I had to drift this thing far. Well, let's go up and take a look. What I can say right away is we definitely had some damage here. Um, interesting. I kind of hit these in different spots. I had I had initially thought about using 22, so I had this Mark 22. But I didn't hit anywhere where I intended to hit, actually. <laughs> so what we got here is our 32 Smith & Wesson Long. It almost punched through the back of that, not quite. And our our 30 caliber pellet, you know, looking at where the nose is at, compared to what I'm seeing here, I'm gonna guess that's about halfway through. 
as where this is, you know, 85% through. So actually, when we look at this, this is pretty impressive. I think if I hit that coconut more squared on, I think it would do more damage. I'm going to try one more time at the coconut because I think I can hit it more centered. And that might tell me something else. So let me try again. So again, I am at 10 yards or so. And I just I hit this thing more squared. I think I might be grazing it or something. I'm seeing the pellet hit behind it on the dirt. So its energy wants to keep moving forward, that's for sure. There we go, nice solid hit on that. I think that did better than before. And I'm basically seeing the same thing. It's definitely cracked. But it does look like we're hitting and like right here, it looks like a solid hit from this lead pattern. I think we're hitting it just fine. It's just not wanting to go through. So it's kind of the same type of thing we're seeing with the juggernaut box where maybe it's so close to what I would call totally lethal, but at the same time, not so much. Uh, so let's shoot from 25 yards at the gong and see how these two compare to each other. All right, 25 yards. I believe this kind of arcs up quite a bit from recoil. It just, you know, it'll make the bullet jump up. We see that with a lot of slow cartridges, so. I'm gonna aim at the very base of that plate and see if I can make a hit. All right, not too bad, a few hits there, a few misses. But what I'm seeing is even loaded as low as you can go, this is pretty impressive little cartridge. I mean, it has less recoil than a 22, or maybe about the same, somewhere in that vicinity. Let's see how that 30 caliber pellet rifle compares at 25 yards. See if we got any momentum or swing on that plate. And as I just look at that muzzle, how cool that looks. That is very large, very, very, very large. And it does kind of tire you to, to cock this thing unless you're really, really in shape. So let's see if I can hit that plate at 25 yards here. See if I can get it. Oh yeah, definitely hit it. So now that I'm sighting in, it's a little bit better here. I pulled that one. It's pretty cool as it hits the ground because it makes a thud. You definitely know you're hitting something down range. And it hits that plate like a bullet. You know, it's not like, like a BB gun would just go ting ting a little bit and wouldn't barely do anything. All right, I got a little bird spinner down there. My daughter gave that to me last year. Let's see if I hit that little thing, because that, that's like a game size something you might shoot at with a gun like this from about this distance. Ooh, right over the top. And it moves faster than you would think it would. You know, it's only 550 feet per second, but it just seems like it moves fast. <laughs> it completely knocked it over that's pretty cool all right i told one subscriber i got rid of my metal tank and i basically did but I, what i mean by that is i threw it behind a tree i can kind of see it from here and it's about 45 yards away you can't see it on camera i'm gonna see if i can hit it So I think the more practice I could get with something like this, the more consistent I could get with it. And I think one of the advantages of something like this is if you have a certain task in mind that you might think a 22 would work at, I think this could be an acceptable um, substitution because this gun is only about 240 bucks. That's about what a rifle would cost in 22. Um, but the cool thing is this pellets, they're, the 100 pack of them 
only cost me like eight or nine dollars so we're talking like nine cents a pellet which is a lot less than even 22 ammo so if you have a, a task at hand like you know small game hunting i think this would do excellent and i'm not sure what i think about lethality i definitely would not use it for self-defense let me try one more shot here oh i pulled that one but what i'm saying is this is pretty powerful and if this had the same power in a smaller diameter i think we'd definitely be penetrating stuff and i think we might get better results if we lower the pellet weight um, but just a very very cool cool pellet gun overall it is gigantic and it does take a lot of cocking effort but uh pretty cool overall does it rival a, a real firearm i'm gonna say yes but barely um i would say if you took a 22 short and you flattened it so it's bigger and moves slower you might be at about this level um but with two shots, we did bust through that baloney pack. We did have eight inches of moon path, damage path in that ballistics gel. We did embed in a two by four halfway. The coconut, you know, not so much. I, I think if somebody was hitting the head with one of these pellets, it probably would on, you know, the front or wherever it's hardest would probably bounce off just like that. But I think, a front-on shot between a rib would definitely get into the vital organs and possibly shut somebody down. Uh, so that's what you get today. Very fun and very interesting test. And what, one other thing we can learn from this is that gunpowder is a pretty powerful thing because that was some pretty cheap, low-loaded rounds of awful gunpowder. It was just some cheap universal stuff and loaded as crappy as you can go it still is very easily deadly so very interesting so that's what you get today so as always comment share and like and thanks for watching